welcome to uh, our workshop on uh, generative writing through AI and just introduce the team. We have Swati, she is heading operations and our wonderful designer, Shripanna uh, with us. Uh, I know one person here already, Keshav. He's from the straight design uh, school. Um, so do you want to do a round of introductions? Is this a few of us, so that should be fine. Masa, hi. Okay. Okay. Do you want to? Hello. Swati, you want to start it off? Uh, or should I share my screen or would you like to? Yeah, I can start it off. Okay. Do you want me to share my screen or? Uh, I think it's okay either way. I just wanted to introduce myself. Hello, everyone. I am Swati. And as Ambika mentioned, I manage the operations end for GUI AI. And uh, just wanted to give you a quick introduction to GUI. I don't know if all of you have already had a chance to use some of our workflows and tools on the GUI.ai website. But uh, essentially, what we're trying to do is make AI accessible to everybody, to creators, to businesses, to regular people, because of course, there's an AI boom, but it's also at times overwhelming and complicated and not everybody can use collabs and uh, not everybody's a whiz like our Ambika here. <laughs> so we've gotten together with people like her so she can teach us uh, how we can use AI in our daily lives to uh, do a bunch of great things and uh, not just as like a gimmicky thing to like just churn out some sort of a meme material or some image imagery. So today's workshop is focused on writing and I will hand it off back to Ambika who will be able to explain what all we're doing today. Okay, wait, wait, sorry, these slides sometimes. Right, uh, so is anybody here a, a developer? Uh... I'm a front-end developer, I don't know if that counts. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, all all, all development counts. Uh, so yeah, the, just to get a sense for you specifically because you're doing front-end is that uh, GUI will allow you to like easily call APIs without having to go to each of the specific workflows. Uh, and I think, I think that's really advantageous to just kind of uh, get your project up and running without having to uh, really think about, okay, where do I go for this API? How do I get this going? Things like that. Um, so some of the really strange and interesting outputs that we've been looking at, including making Elon a baby, uh, we have a, a definitely an, like a good suite now of tools which are specific to text and specific to image. So today we're uh, look, going to look at images. Oh, sorry, if I always do images. So today we're looking at text. Uh, and uh, okay, Rock. <sighs> Okay, uh, can you tell me, because all the videos are on, who has here used generative AI text tools like ChatGPT or uh, just like GPT-3 Playground or, uh, I don't know, like used it on your phone when you send out like text messages and then the emoji turns up, uh, which is Markov chains. Yeah, everyone? Yes? Okay, cool. So... And specifically, uh, people who've used uh, the OpenAI tools like GPT-3 or Playground, just like, okay, one, two, three, okay. Right, so we'll just start off our uh, journey with GUI's Compare LLM tool, which is basically, LLM stands for Large Language Models. And we've been quickly able to integrate all of the recent uh, language models that uh, OpenAI has come, come up with. Uh, I'll quickly show you since it's a mixed group uh, and I know one is coming in from a speculative background. I know Masa is, a, is from a UX from one front end. So this is uh, just me experimenting with some storytelling, uh, which may be interesting for some of you who've come in today, uh, which is basically I had two or three stories like little uh Im like little descriptions of these uh, images that i was building and then i asked uh chat gpt to give me more stories like this uh so essentially i think the key to remember always for either images or text is 
prompting and when we say prompting it just basically means how do you uh, set up the tone uh, set up the uh, the context and set up the instruction uh, to the AI to be able to get the output that you're looking for. Uh, it's uh, it's not just about, uh, you know, telling it that, okay, make me some stories. It's about telling them, okay, do I want the stories to be really creepy? Do I want them to be, you know, have a positive end to it? Or do I want them to be rhyming and things like that? So you have to kind of give those little uh, inputs to the tool and then the tool will give you the right format because otherwise it will just end up sounding like extremely good grammar but like really no like uh, depth to the content uh, so here i've used uh, chat gpt which is the newer model and then uh, da vinci which is just gpt3 plus plus almost uh, and you can see it's really simple. I gave the two stories. And before I wrote the two stories as examples, I have just said, okay, give me more stories like this. So there is a certain uh, natural language uh, context to these that uh, there is a beginning which starts with, uh, say, like an image number and a kind of a code. Then it, it has this format where it's a patient from a particular part of the world or country. And then uh, it starts to look at what that story is about. So, uh, so as you can see, the output has actually kind of done that, that it's taken that format that I created, uh, ensured that it uh, keeps the characters uh, in that same way, and then kind of built on the story. Now, I didn't specifically mention that they should be stories in India. So it has gone ahead and done Japan and Paris and Moscow. So I could have been specific and said that, okay, share more st uh, stories like this, uh, uh, within context of only being in India or whatever. But uh, just to start you guys off, uh, I will share this link here. So if you want to uh, look at it specifically, uh, that what we can do once we've set up the prompt here is that we can also give uh, some more added settings to ensure that the answer is as uh, interesting or as specific as we want it to be. So here I've just given one output. I'm going to just maybe turn down one of them for this example. Uh, and then I'll say, okay, give me two options for the same thing. And then I can say the number of tokens. So like tokens are basically like almost like words, uh, but they don't always work uh, how we see uh, perceive words like higher value allows whatever. Uh, there is a certain kind of... Uh, certain algorithm which runs it in terms of that but 500 tokens is approximately i think uh swati around five six hundred words if i'm not wrong i think we can google this maybe uh, anyway i'll i can share that later and then uh, you can also then set how creatively you would like the ai to respond to you so this is pretty simple like the higher i go the crazier the answer and the lower i go the less crazy uh this Specifically, this part, like the creativity and the way you put the or, uh, the first part of the prompt, uh, are you have to perceive them like, uh, like I always see like human collaboration. So, like if you're gonna tell somebody, okay, write some stories like this for me, uh, they may interpret it in their own way. Somebody might like really take this forward in their own direction. Someone might just take this bit and then write a full story, not give me these snippets that I need. So as specific as you're going to be with the tool, the answers uh, or the prompts uh, generated outputs will be uh, as per what you're looking. And then the creativity is basically like how crazily you want it to like answer like as simple as you might say, okay, uh, you know, hey, can you write these stories for me? And Swati says, but what do you, how do you want me to do that? And I just say, hey, go crazy. Uh, so that is basically what it is. Sorry, Swati, I'm using you as an example. So I've hit run now. And hopefully we get uh, two outputs uh, where we can get a couple of stories like this. Oh no, one of them said it can't provide anything. Uh, right. Okay, so now this is because it's chat GPT because sometimes uh, it doesn't like when you give it uh, uh, false information. Uh, but anyway, uh, it has given... Uh, ah, thanks, Swati. So three-fourth of a word, right? Uh, so since we like turned up the creativity quite a bit, uh, the stories are also a bit longer and uh, they have stopped uh, being about uh, these women patients. They've uh, really like 
started uh, going into group of scientists like some humanoid creatures and other kinds of shapes and they have also lost the format which i had given it which was very specific where i said that okay after the after the image number you have to give patient number so and so whatever so that has totally gone so this is what i mean by creativity so like the closer we want it to our original prompt so i can like turn this down totally and then uh, replay it resubmit it and then uh, turn it up uh, as much as I feel uh, works for me. So here, so this is like, this is fairly close in terms of its structure to what I've given. Uh, so uh, we, I'll just run through all the tools and then maybe we'll do a quick exercise at the end if that's something that would interest people. Uh, to note, uh, all your saved prompts will turn up here in a, in the history section. So whenever you feel you want to like pick something uh, back up from the from a past uh, thing that you were trying you can just go ahead and find them all here uh, now we will go to uh, okay there is nobody here from a marketing kind of background is there no so swati is it okay if we just like very briefly run through seo because there's nobody specifically here yeah for sure so, but uh, I think it's is... helpful generally in content creation also. So, ah. you know, see what you can make of it. Right, right. Okay. Uh, okay. So, this is our very, I really love this tool, but like it's really up to you how you end up using it because you're coming in from different backgrounds, um, which allows you to uh, uh, do like a Google search with a specific tool called ScaleSub, which is, uh, which is used for SEO optimization. No, SEO is optimization for SEO work. So, you can add specific uh, websites in the search query uh, and say that, okay, can you give me something specifically for that? So say, for example, uh, like I want to put in a query for, um, okay, uh, best uh, vegan carbonara pasta. Uh, and then I can... Maybe I wanted to search and like compete with Bon Appetit or whatever. And then well, I have to check the, what is the hyperlink for that? Yeah. And then I will uh, say pick uh, one of the models. I just want one output for the moment. And then I will kind of maybe up the creativity a little bit. Uh, and then hit submit. So what this can do is then say, if you have a website that you want to like optimize for your SEO, uh, you need that specifically. Oh, I forgot to change the name of the uh, title of the project. Anyway, I'll show that to you as well. So uh, you can kind of then not, you don't have to then sit and figure out what would be the best uh, SEO content that you will need you can just like add in all your keywords and then it will give you of course I gave the wrong keyword with Star Trek but anyway uh, the idea is that it helps you sort of ensure that you get the best highest ranking content for your website uh, whenever you are uh, generating more content for the specific pages of your website and then uh, we I'll, oh, I'll share I'll re-hit submit and share this because I don't want this to be okay Uh, and then we have, uh, oh, this is a, a, one of our newer tools, which is quite exciting as well, uh, which allows you to do uh, several PDF uh, searches and then give you like summaries or like search queries based on those PDFs. So the, uh, the flow is very, uh, very interesting. You just add in all the PDFs that you want to for what you're searching for, and then it will... Uh, quickly like do a scroll uh, referencing of all of the material that's there in it and it will give you a beautifully edited uh, answer with citations as well. Uh, so I'm just going to show you one of the examples which was quite nice. I thought this chili one or maybe the pregnancy one I think uh, it's quite nice. So uh, basically these are all the documents for the WHO pregnancy guidelines. Uh, so this document itself is fairly extensive or 170 pages and uh, once it's uploaded 
uh, you can put in the query. So like here they put in a query, okay, she's running a fever, she's in her 23rd week, what could be causing this, what are the diseases or like maybe what is a good nutrition plan for uh, for week 12. Uh, so what it'll do is it'll search specifically within the document and use GPT-3 uh, or any of, I mean, any of the GPT-3 models to give you an answer uh, that is solely from the document itself. So here uh, specifically, uh, they, you can instruct the task a lot more in detail. So here we've written generate a comprehensive factoid answer. Oops, sorry. Uh, and... Uh, if there is no information in the document, you should say, I don't know. So then you get uh, an unbiased uh, response from it, which is not from the billions of uh, like trained uh, data sets on, uh, that are available to GPT-3, but specifically from this document, but it uses natural language that uh, is afforded to it by uh, GPT-3. So I'll just hit run and see uh, what it does. Swati, were you the one who made this one? Maybe if you have something specific to share on this. That... Oh, no, I did not make it, but I can provide a little bit of extra context uh, about why we were working on this. And essentially, um, it is to, like uh, like Ambika explained, that you're able to upload a lot of documents. So it's not only helpful from the research point of view, but what we are trying to do with it is uh, uh, with another partner, hopefully build something wherein... Uh, healthcare workers in rural areas are able to like in in when they are dealing with uh, patients you know they might not be equally trained as a city doctor but they have all this information with them but if a patient comes to them and they don't understand uh, where to begin or how to assess the symptoms they're not going to leave through like a 12000 page document on the spot and try to piece things together but thanks to this they would be able to hopefully do that right you're just like okay this is what says, what so and so is experiencing what should we do next so this tool helps you pass through that entire giant document and give you like a cohesive response and actually provide treatment. And it's uh, it's good enough that it can tell you the dosages. It can tell you like the uh, information that's just popped up now. So that's something like we're trying to build. Like that's one of the things that we're doing at GUI that as um, because then we're stitching through many different things so that it achieves a particular goal like that. Right. Uh, so I'll share this link as well, maybe. Uh, so this could be even useful, say, like if you're doing a larger understanding of, say, you have a m multiple number of PDFs about some specific academic subject, you can put them all together here and then try to cull the information out of it. Uh, in the settings, aside from the typical ones where we know that you can ch choose the model and then choose the kind of how creatively it answers, there are some specific uh, settings that allow you to specify how many citations do you want, how big do you want that content uh, to be and how uh, detailed do you want that scrolling to be, uh, which basically means that uh, it's just like skimming through a document. Isn't that right, Swati? If I, am I putting putting it e in easy words? Yeah, so you're, you're just, so if you like put a higher number, it's like skipping through a lot more, right? Yeah, I believe that's good. Yeah, so you can kind of choose how uh, you want that tool to uh, respond to, uh, how much you want it to learn from those documents and, and then respond to it in that space. I believe we've also been able to add, I don't know if that's already been added here, but right. to, be, to give weightage to each file, right? Right. I, I think how oh, they're working yeah. on that now. Maybe. I think they're working. Like if there are multiple that. files, you can say that, okay, give most weightage to the first one that I've uploaded and then this one and then this one. So it'll actually give information based on them. Right. Okay, and then uh, we have, oh, this is our, <laughs> this is our game changing tool. This is basically uh, using GPT with Google search. So as you might know, GPT-3 uh, has a, at least GPT-3's data set is up till 2021. Uh, maybe chat GPT is a little bit sooner, but it does take time for these data sets to kind of be collected and, and be built upon. So how do you ensure that 
when you're answering and i think this, everyone knows this that you know bing or something with chat gpt answered something which was specifically from 2021 uh, where the data set uh, entries ended so we've kind of hooked it up with google search query so you can specific again this is my carbonara recipe but maybe we can change this to something super uh, new like okay maybe i don't know the new black panther i'm assuming was not there in the uh, who is the latest i don't know i'm really not very good with mcu but this is my attempt uh, in 2023 i don't know and you can put in a specific uh, site that you wanted to search but i'm just going to leave that open now uh, and then i will hit submit and then let's see uh, who is okay spoilers for you I don't know if someone's not, I don't care about <laughs> MCU spoilers. Okay, so it is uh, Shuri or, and then it gives you like a little bit of detail that she's taken over. But this may not have been possible in the like GPT-3 because obviously the data set is older. So this is a really good tool where you're like able to uh, cull data, latest data from the internet. I, I even used it to like find out about the Turkey earthquake, which is quite nice. Uh, and then it gives you like this little succinct uh, paragraph and also gives you all the sources that it's used. So fairly useful uh, that way. Maybe I'll share this one. Not one of my best prompts, but okay. <laughs> uh, and then, right. So now uh, I think Keshav is from the sessions in straight. So he knows about the chatbots. But we've also now kind of updated the chatbots a bit to have only text. Uh, you don't need to have uh, any video or audio. And the other thing is that it's now, uh, it's trying to be contextual because we both have access to the chat GPT uh, uh, AI, uh, API and also that we now started storing all the conversations. So if you see here, uh, you can then have a more detailed conversation with this particular bot, which is uh, we, what we are using for uh, one of our partner projects, which is... Uh, it's a fantastical bot that uh, is from the future and it uh, it and it works towards climate justice and uh, climate action so i can now uh, either i can clear the history or start afresh or i can just add more to it uh, for example here i'm already asking it some questions about uh, what what uh, we can do together to uh, to towards climate action and stop the likes of spacex and others so it's kind of given me some very like uh, kind of equitable kind of answer saying that oh we have to encourage them to start using sustainable practices and etc uh, whatever more so we could add more questions here and it will then uh, give me <clears throat> uh, so i can see okay what what more can spacex do in this context? so earlier with gpt3 it would not have uh, recognized uh, what I meant by this context because it wouldn't have an understanding that this conversation has been going on for a while but hopefully here with uh, the chat GPT API uh, this should not be difficult is the is this like bothering you the the chat meeting chat thing or is it not there on the like my chat box Okay, I guess it's not there because you can't see. Right, so now it's specifically answered uh, within that uh, context that uh, it's allowing us to speak because I didn't mention here if I'm talking about climate justice or carbon footprint, but it has understood that we're talking about sustainability and carbon footprint. So it's uh, kind of answered within that uh, idea. Uh, chatbots, of course, are integrated if that's the word uh, you can add it to your you can create a facebook page and add it there and then then people can have conversations with it uh, we've got a sample here for it where uh, you can uh, ask it questions and it responds with the video who are you yeah. What did I do? Sorry. Oh. 
oh it got lost sorry i'll maybe i'll come back to this if someone interested uh, yeah so these are our tools that we've been using there are a few more uh, that work around with text if you go to the explore section here you will see all our tools both image uh, and uh, text are available uh, there are few tools that allow you to do like a profile lookup and give you like personalized email so like if you put in someone's linkedin it will try to find out where they are currently and then contextualize the email uh, and then of course the rest are our uh, image related uh, image related uh, tools so if you want we can maybe do a quick couple of exercises and if you feel stuck i can kind of help you out a bit and of course swati is also there Sorry, Swati, keep putting in the spot. <laughs> um, I had a quick question. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we give a scenario. Let's say we are taking this road, then we would do this. And then let's say we have an end point where this would end. So can this AI or the generative process take uh, gauge a speculation and give me more insight to what the narrative could pick up like out of the four or five prompts for example uh so i think swati maybe you can also add but i feel like you have to be like really specific like say if you want these prompts to sound uh, like a story by octavia butler versus if you want it to sound like isma chuktai then you have to specify those things a bit more and then of course we have to remember that the data by data data sets will be biased so it's possible that if you give a reference that it doesn't understand culturally it may not necessarily give you the responses you're looking for so what could be more interesting is perhaps to use the search tool which allows you to like club uh, google with it and then you can say that okay based on these a uh, few google search queries i'm looking to make a story that sounds like this uh so that might give you better and more exciting uh, trajectories but i think uh, you have to like uh, consider that it's not going to give you an exact speci specifically for your uh, use case where you're looking at uh, speculative scenarios um especially we... in gpt3 i find that things become very positive sounding at the end like uh, whereas chat gpt might still try to uh, keep your uh, stories uh, intonation and 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 uh, style yeah sorry but we put all this information under the prompt section uh, yes. so uh, just to... in the chronological uh, manner how we want the progression to be yeah uh, you can try it a bit and then maybe like if you use say the if you're on uh, in the llm tool you can uh, sort of give it chunks because i think there is also a limitation like how much it will throw back to you so like typically i think open ai allows you a maximum of like 1500 tokens uh so that will like turn out to be say maybe 5 600 words or little or maybe little more and then uh you will be like okay but i want more of the story so how do i how do i get that going so start start with smaller chunks i think that will also give you a sense on how you want to build it so uh, the typical format i use for prompting is that i start see like for image see suppose i want this image behind me so i start off with asking first asking it for the uh, cultural context to come correctly then i ask for the style to come correctly and then i say okay now that you've got all of these things give me more tentacles give me more uh, medical equipment so uh, start uh, so if your story is about say uh, I don't know. Can you give me an example? For example, someone is riding a bike by the at the evening, and mm -hmm. they're supposed to reach a river, but mm -hmm. they would take a bus, mm -hmm. and uh, they would head off to to some restaurant. And in between, let's say, we gave a prompt that accident might happen or some some disturbances happen. Right. But I want uh, to leave a space for the speculation to happen. just just to just for me to have an open ended idea what right. what could have possibly happened or right. something like that yeah. 
So, so you would then uh, specifically prompt it in that way by saying that there's someone going on a cycle, uh, they are moving through the city, and then you can use your your tonality in it. Like you can say, you know, you can describe the city in a particular style or language, and then say that okay, give me a few uh, continue the story and give me a few scenarios uh, that uh, are about this kind of a conflict where they may have had an accident. And what also is uh, sometimes works is that if you give two examples. Like you say, make two small stories and then you say that, okay, give me more like this. That works very well because it's really able to read patterns quite well. Right. Swati, is that, is that a good answer? I don't know. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So basically to break it up as we go forward, not to give yeah. them a whole story in order to get. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, just like a novel doesn't come out in a day, right? You have to like sit on it, figure out the structure, figure out the characters, figure out the art arc. So you have to think of it in the same way that I've, uh, I've, uh, I'm an editor and I've tasked the writer to write it this way. The writer's not going to come back with a full story. They're going to talk to you about it. So you have to think of it in that way. Okay, anyone else has any questions? Quiet group today. Sure, small and quiet. <laughs> so, if you there's guys a particular to... sorry, 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 go ahead. So, I was just saying that if there's a particular tool that any of you are interested in exploring further, we're happy to do that because we have more time, and it's yeah. an intimate group. Yeah. So, if you think something is more uh, applicable in your field of work, I think we can explore that together. Mm -hmm. But it's more the settings and stuff, or we can do a little. Exercise around that. Maybe. I think Keisha has got a question. I think I would be interested in the int the videos that are on the like create interactive video bot. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, we can just show that as. Uh... Uh, if if that's possible, of course. <laughs> just me. Sorry, I was just answering Keisha in the chat. Uh, right. So what we could do is uh, look at. Let me share my reshare my screen. Right. So usually uh, we oh we do have a video bot workshop, I think, upcoming next to next week, right? I think twenty third. So maybe if you want to join that. But the format is uh, very simple. Uh, there is a within the settings uh, is where you set up the context for your bot. And this part, the top, is basically just for you to ask answers and check if the bot is working as per your expectations. So here uh, you'll observe that this uh, large text box, we have a space to put together a little bit of a background story for our uh, bot. So give them a personality like are they hopeful, are they sarcastic, are they angry sounding, uh, whatever that might be, where they are from, what is their context, etc. And then uh, we uh, add a little bit of like a... Uh, user and uh, bot conversation interplay so this uh, again as it's a like if you give patterns it's easier for uh, gpt3 or chat gpt to respond within those formats of patterns so you give them a q a pattern like how any uh, chat conversation might be so like here we have questions like who are you where are you from what are you know what are your opinions about climate and these don't have to be in any sort of uh, specific uh, format, uh, like chronologically or anything. They can be all the Q and A's that you might think are possible. Uh, and then uh, you can enable a voice for it, particularly like maybe I need to share it with audio. Sorry, one second. And uh, so then 
The post-Anthropocene is a term used to describe the period of time after the Anthropocene, which is the current geological epoch in which humans have been the dominant influence on the environment. So here you can uh, choose from a variety of uh, voices that are uh, available through Google and through UberDuck. Uh, so these are the kind of workflows that we are looking at. So here you can see that it's like you have GPT-3, you have text to speech, you have lip sync, uh, then all of it is coming together for a chat-like response. So these are the kind of workflows that we'd like to be available uh, for, uh, for our uh, user base. Uh, and this will just give you a sense of where you can take it, especially on the, if you're into front end, then you don't have to sit and like stitch all of these together. It's already available and it's just about putting it into your uh, web experience. So you can choose the voice. So there are like a bunch of voices you can choose from, and then you can add a video of a, of a character or a person or even yourself. Uh, this need not uh, be a video. It could also just be a static image of a person or, or of a of a avatar. And then uh, you can choose your language model. And then, uh, oh, also now we have specific docs it can search, right? Is this like fully done, Swati? I don't know like exactly. Where it's still are. like a work in progress, but it has definitely like, functional. Right. It right. works. Uh, but then we'll have to maybe specify here na, in the in the script that only answer from this particular yeah, you'll have to make those tweets essentially. Right. But it's also very interesting because uh, it can give you a very conversational, uh, a conversational bot. Like it's not just answering your questions; it can ask you questions in return and say, "Oh, what do you mean?" and all, like pick up information and say, "Do you mean this?" Right. So that also happens. Right. So uh, just for your benefit, like maybe if I, I don't know if I have any pictures here, but uh, maybe I'll just use this one. So now I've just used that uh, same image that's in my uh, video background. Oh, it's pretty big, sorry. Uh, and then uh, I'm not changing anything in the script though, just to give you a sense of what it might look like. And then here I can see, uh, what do you think? Oh, wow, great typing. So. And then uh, it will go through the process of now reading that uh, script that we wrote for it, but uh, applying it back to this new character uh, face that we've added. Oh, did I do enable a video? Or oh, maybe I forgot. No, I did. Okay. Okay, there they are. So here, uh, climate action is essential for like the future of our planet. Of it is important. Person. So here, uh, to remember is that if you're making a, a bot that is video, you need to give it something that's recognizable like a human face. Otherwise, it's not able to identify that and move the lips uh, so well. Uh, right? Yeah, I think that's about it. Nobody is saying anything. Oh, do you have any specific questions for your projects that you would like us to answer? Somehow, maybe we can guide you to the right tools uh, within the suite of tools. Just one quick question. Each of the running options has uh, certain credits accounted to them, right? For example, oh, yes. yeah. so these are five, as I was saying, uh, yes. five tokens or something. So mm -hmm. um, essentially, you have to pay uh, to get extra tokens. Or, uh, yeah. How does this work? So, since you're using uh, GPT 3 and then uh, Chat GPT is actually like so basically, you get uh, within this, don't see how many credits I have. Okay, uh, you get thousand credits <laughs> when you when you sign up, and uh, if you're doing images, it like it's almost uh, two to three hundred images that you can create. Uh, but say for example, you're just using the base uh, large language model tool here, so each of the models has 
a specific amount of credits attached to it based on the uh, based on the payment uh, pricing tiers uh, from OpenAI. So ChatGPT is one credit, whereas uh, DaVinci is ten, and then uh, Curie is five, uh, Babbage is two, and Ada is one. So uh, you can just like say maybe use ChatGPT anyway. It's the latest and greatest now. And then uh, it's just one credit. So every so you can run it thousand times literally before you have to uh, uh, come for more credits. And then anyway, because Swati's already said you get extra credits for being in the workshop. <laughs> uh, and the credit format uh, works fairly simply. I think uh, like all of these uh, newer tools, you can just do a top up if that's preferable. Or if you are using it quite a bit, you can uh, go for a monthly uh, plan. Hi, I'm Vika. Can I ask a question? Yes. So, uh, hi everyone. Um, I'm a student, a fifth year student of interaction design, and I'm working on a on my graduation project where I'm trying to build uh, an AI bot that uh, asks us questions to make us think and interpret something for ourselves uh, rather than giving us answers. Um, I wanted to know if this is even a valid question in terms of um, is there a way uh, for us to build a bot where uh, it's asking questions that is about data that we don't know yet, uh, where it's not just rejumbling, you know, words together based on existing data, uh, and really asking us about things that even it doesn't know about? You want the bot to ask the questions. Correct. So the ultimate goal is what? The ultimate goal is um, it, it, it's something that helps us um, make more uh, conscious decisions and help us sort of identify the gaps in our knowledge. Um, right. And is there a way to sort of identify that? Right. So maybe the I don't know if this will work for you, but perhaps the uh, the Google Search Plus. Uh, web search plus GPT-3 tool might be useful. So then you can train it uh, in a specific way that, okay, uh, always give me uh, information and then like end it with a question like, uh, oh, but, like some kind of like uncle who's really into trivia, like, but did you know this? And then like, you know, go into some, some other direction. So then uh, it might be more useful because A, the data set is then uh, extended by the entirety of Google itself. Uh, and then you can like build on that uh, specifically. That could be like an easy way to start it off. Uh, I just want to uh, add to this question. Is it is it a valid concern to have that um, AI has been trained on um, data that are mostly answers and does that affect the way it asks questions in any way? I mean, that's really on you. Like, I think that's the adventure that you are seeking. So I guess it's an answer that you have to give us. <laughs> I think if I can just add uh, a little bit is essentially you can also ask the bot to role play. Like you can give it an example conversation and it can continue it for you. So whatever conversation you're imagining in your head, you can say role play as a character and B character, and this is the conversation they're having. Continue this conversation and see where that takes you, I guess. And then, as Ambika said, like it takes a bit of it and try it, and it should generate something interesting. Thank you. Yeah, from my experience, like it can definitely ask questions consistently and also ask really ambiguous questions but if you want it to be topical then you'll have to direct it in certain ways like it can't like even in that ambiguity of whatever you're seeking try to direct a tone at least so it knows that okay this is the tone in which I want it to ask existential questions I guess I don't know <laughs> just uh don't have too much context on what you're working on but yeah absolutely thank you
Do you, should we end, end it if everyone's out of questions? Right, uh, just do the compliance Discord server link. And yeah, I was the, just quick to say. Uh, let me... Yeah, because if you have any follow-up questions, you can always uh, find us on Discord or you can have shared our support email ID, support at uh, We're all available as well on email. Uh, so please do reach out to us if you have any follow-up questions about the workshop in general about GUI, if you're working on a project and you're looking for uh, some sort of a bespoke workflow in AI, we're happy to kind of hear you out and see what we can do about that. And if you'd like to uh, show off some of your work on our on our social interwebs and our newsletters, please share it with us. And we're also like pretty quick with emails, so like you can uh connect with us there and uh for only specifically because you're coming from a mm. technology background if there are questions to the developers directly uh you can let us know as well and we can connect you with them quite easily then yeah it's a quick one today thanks so thanks for coming Hope you are fun guys. and we'll have another one soon enough. And so we hope to see all of you there as well. 23rd is the next one. Or 23rd on the video bots, bots, right? Yes, on bots and other conversational AI stuff. Yeah, so we'll do a deep dive on those workflows. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you. You too.